What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I got a video for you as I do every weekday it seems I've been uploading, which is a good thing. Also my hair is crazy now. I'm debating about getting a mullet. I don't know, leave a comment. Today I was thinking, what the heck is going on at BuzzFeed? I haven't heard from BuzzFeed in a couple years. You know, maybe three or four or five years. It used to be a big thing. What is BuzzFeed up to? So I looked and right now we got BuzzFeed video. It's pretty basic stuff, you know, a lot of uh, pride stuff, K-pop stuff, um, barista coffee, I guess. That's a big deal. You know, just kind of the normal trash where it's just a bunch of clickbaity stuff. But I did see one video right here that I wanted to make a video about. Growing up LGBTQ in the church. So let's watch this video together right now. If you're ashamed of who you are and you're feeling like no one else is gonna get me, it's not true. Mm. Emotional music. I am a fully out lesbian woman and I was raised in the Jehovah's Witness household. I grew up Roman Catholic in Houston, Texas. Yes, the South and land of Beyonce. I grew up in a religious households. It was very strict and unloving. I grew up in an Orthodox Jewish community. I grew up in a Catholic household. I got baptized when I was a senior in high school, and then I ended up going to a really conservative Christian college. I grew up in I wonder which a, one. a very Catholic religious household. We're also part of the charismatic renewal group, so we were even deeper into the church. I realized really quickly how the church viewed queerness, and it was not positive. Of course it's not positive. I'm sorry, but of course it's not positive. It's because we believe it's a sin. So just like we believe any other sin is bad, we would also consider homosexuality just as bad. So of course that makes sense. Just because this is my Catholic experience does not mean that every Catholic person or every Catholic experience was like this, but for me, in my small town, the way that Catholicism was expressed was very aggressively. I would hear a lot of sermons talking about the lifestyle that I am living is deeming me to hell. So See, that's the thing. That's not deeming you to hell. Your sinful heart is. Uh, as we read Jeremiah 17, uh, 9. That's it, right? I've said it so many times, I'm starting to forget. Let me just pull it up. Let's pull it up. I got a Bible, let's pull it up. Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick, who can understand it? So it's not a particular lifestyle because we also read in Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So it's not a specific lifestyle that condemns you to hell. When you're born, you're automatically condemned to hell because we are sinners inherently from time of our birth. It's not like there's one specific lifestyle that will condemn you to hell. And these people have been told that it's their lifestyle that's condemning them to hell. But it's not true. It's their sinful hearts, actually. Christians know that we have to turn from our sins. So do. So does everyone else. That's kind of how it goes. All right, let's continue. I kept it secret for so long. One chapel in particular, the pastor is up there saying that he took a trip with his family to Puerto Rico and that he saw men holding hands together and was wondering, why did I pay all this money to have to see something like that? The atrocity that- I mean, it's kind of true. I don't want to see any physical anything in, in public from even straight people. That's just me though. But it's true because we as a nation have become very, very tolerant of, of, a, of sin. We've become very tolerant of sin to the point where we kind of just let it go without any issue. And that's really a problem. The sin. And I remember sitting there feeling so crappy because essentially he was talking about me. There were lots of strict rules and laws that we had to stick to. It made it very, very hard to be able to express myself. Most of the time, I just felt like I was a walking contradiction. I didn't identify with the person that I was portraying to the outside world. I See, I really relate to that. I didn't, I remember growing up in the church not feeling like the Christian I was pretending to be because I had this whole secret life of sin. For me specifically, it was pornography and masturbation. I remember a very real turning point in my life when I said, okay, I have to choose one. I have to choose Jesus in turning from my sin or I have to choose the world and all that the world promises. And I went with Jesus. 
it's hard. We do have to bear our cross daily and it's difficult and there's highs and there's very low lows. But that's what happens. What it what seems to me is that these people also felt that at a certain point was either I turn from this and turn towards Christ or I stay in my sin. And they chose their worldly lifestyle. Now, this happens to a lot of people. We read the parable about the seed that is thrown on the, the rocky soil, the, the good soil, uh, the road, and then in the brambles. So these people, they they probably were cast on the very on the road, which it sprouted up very quickly, but then withered out because they could not have roots. They had no roots. And that's what it seems to me here. I actually really enjoyed singing in mass, but then when it came down to being gay, it wasn't wasn't something I felt accepted with. Because it's not accepted. It's it's not. Just like we always we always so focus on the gay. We always focus on gay and how being gay isn't accepted, but neither is divorce, neither is uh, committing adultery, neither is cheating on your spouse, neither is alcoholism, drug abuse, neither is stealing, lying, <laughs> all these things. We look down on them because we don't want to be them. We don't want to love the things of this world. We're not supposed to be conformed to this world. So it's not just that one. It's all of them. My most embarrassing and hurtful times was when, uh, as the choir director, one of the tenors uh, sang in a nice, beautiful tenor, tenor voice, Reggie is a f nobody, nobody stood up and said a word for me. That was absolutely devastating. I was see, and that's a problem. Someone should have stood up for him. But at the same time, we're supposed to we're supposed to preach the truth in love. We're supposed to teach the truth in love. So at the same time of defending someone, just like when Jesus defended. The, uh, the woman that the religious leaders brought to him and said she has been caught in adulterous acts. Remember, eventually they all left and he said, has anyone condemned you? And he said, and she said, no, no one's left to condemn me. And he said, neither do I go and sin no more. Someone should have been that person for this man saying, hey, I'm supporting you, but I'm going to support you in love, meaning you can't keep doing this. I thought that being gay was plain old wrong you know you were going to hell i remember before i came out it felt like i you're not going to hell because you're gay you're going to hell because you're a sinner very big distinction i had already lost everybody in my life growing up queer and black i really was just trying to survive so much of me was so scared that my parents that my community that my friends would no longer support me. For the longest time, I thought I was the only one. There wasn't examples of someone like me when I was growing up that told me it was okay to be who I was. Realizing that I was part of the LGBT community was very empowering on one hand, but on the other hand, it was also very scary. Every single week after I came out that I went to church, I would just pray that the news hadn't spread. I felt dirty. I didn't feel like I could be myself. I felt ashamed of who I was at first. You know, I felt very ashamed. I tried to create a way. I left the church when I was 16 years old because I told my mother, I don't want to come here anymore. I heard a lot of things about don't do this, don't do that, but I did not hear very much about love. And when I read the Bible, I was seeing a lot of things about love. There's a lot of things about love in the Bible, but it's also to speak the truth in love. Uh, and the one thing that we absolutely cannot love is sin. A lot of conversations with myself and with God, I just came to the conclusion that it was okay to be who I was. When I came out, I lost most of my friends and then I moved across the country and made so many amazing friends that loved me, not despite who I was, but because of who I was. Once yeah. I went away out of state for college. And that's the thing. You are always going to find someone who supports your sin. You can read this in Romans 1 as I'm scrolling there now. Physical Bible, y'all. Brought to you by the Bible. All right, Romans 1 verse 32 says, Though they know God's righteous decree, and that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. If you're a sinner, you will find someone who supports your sin, because we know that the way to heaven is narrow. You know, the gate and the path is narrow which means there is a lot of people sinning. A lot of people that love the world are worldly people. 
and will support your sin. In New York City, I could be 100% Reginald anywhere I am. It was a very long journey to come to where I am with my parents now, but I think it's a great place. Is there still room to grow? Yes. But I think that where we're at is a place that I never thought we would be, even three years ago. My relationship with my mother has grown stronger. I didn't come out to my mother until actually I was 19 years old. She smiled and said, Reginald, I kind of thought so. But I never taught you who to love. I just taught you to love. And no matter who you are or what you do, you will always be my son and I will always love you. I've learned to love myself because I deserve to. I deserve to. Uh, learn to love yourself. Uh, in, in the words of John the Baptist, I forget the exact verse right now, but he says, I must decrease Jesus. He must increase. We are to cast aside our fleshly desires. The, the whole process of sanctification is to become more like Jesus and less like myself. Notice how all of these people who've left the church uh, are not at all talking about Jesus. Serve love. I feel safer even in a world that is still not safe for me. I still feel safer. Why is the world not safe for you? How is it not safe for you? I don't understand that. I'm sure this man lives in the United States of America, which is one of the safest countries in the world, except for Chicago, Detroit, San Francisco, various cities like that. Other than that, safest nation in the world, safest country in the world. We're in the middle of Pride Month after a year and a half of Black Lives Matter. You're probably one of the most privileged persons right now, realistically. Because I know that I'm living the life that I want to live. I think that I'm finally at a place where I am 100% confident in my sexuality and no part of me feels ashamed or hidden or like a problem anymore. And if you are a person of faith who does love and accept all queer identities and all people in general, let that be known. If you are an LGBTQ youth that are living in an intolerant environment, I know that you probably can't get away, but know this. You are completely loved and you are completely lovable just because you are enough. If you are being made... And that's true. You are completely, lo completely lovable. You know, for God so loved the world, he gave us his, his only begotten son. Jesus loves you so much. Uh, Romans 5, 8, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But we have to remember that, that Jesus says, you know, turn, turn away from your sin, repent, follow me, pick up your cross every day. You know, he says it, you have to your, hate your parents, hate your family, hate your brothers and sisters. Once you put your hand to the plow, you can't turn back. Now, what that means is, is how much can you give up for Jesus? Obviously, he doesn't mean hate your actual parents. We have a commandment saying, honor your mother and father. But what the emphasis behind it is, is we are turning actively away from our sin to be more like Christ. This video, they are not explaining that at all. And it's because I would doubt any of these people are saved, unfortunately. I need to feel that your sexuality is inherently wrong that is a reflection of them and not you. People are gonna make you feel otherized, section off, like a sinner, and you know what? That's not your problem. That is not your problem. Your one job in this life is to be authentic, period. And if they don't love you, there's a whole community of queer people who will embrace you and love you as their own. You are not alone. You are not alone. I mean, I'm sitting right here. I'm. Do, do you see my queer body? I'm literally right here. You are not a sinner. You are worthy of love. You are not a sinner. That is such a lie. That is such a lie. There is a world out there that wants to celebrate you. You just gotta find it. I think God made me exactly the way I'm supposed to be, and that's the end of it. And I'm a proud and out lesbian woman. God, it is like really great to say that. Today, I can say I'm a proud queer man who loves to gender bend and explore his sexuality in a way that I- That doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry, but you cannot change your gender. That is just a fact. It's a, it's a fact. You can't change it. You can't- Gender isn't fluid. That in itself doesn't make any sense to me. I truly never thought that I would. My name is Reginald Thomas Brown. My pronouns are they and them. I am a queer, gender non-conforming, black, 
revolutionary who is loving my life like it's golden. All right. That's the end of that video. The sin part hurt your soul. The, the part where they say that they aren't sinners. Here's the thing. I see this video as a huge threat to growing Christians through to baby Christians because there's going to be some baby Christian who is struggling with supposedly gender identity or some part of uh, homosexual sin. They're going to be struggling with that and they're going to find this video and all they're going to hear is that you're not a sinner. You're not, we love you. You know, you're worthy of love and you don't have to change and you have to be authentic and be yourself. And the issue with that is that's very dangerous. I, I've heard this example before. I forget who said it exactly, but it, it's, you don't tell a depressed person that they're perfect the way they are. You don't tell a depressed person they're perfect the way they are because guess what? They're depressed. They hate themselves. And now that you say that they're perfect the way they are, they're going to start thinking, I hate the way I am. And that's the other thing. When you look at someone who is overweight, you can't tell them their body is perfect because their body is literally sick. It's overweight. It cannot support themselves. We have 630,000 heart disease deaths every year in the States. There's, that's a reason for that. There's a reason for that is because there's overweight people in this country. So when people see this and they say, oh, you're, you're gay, you're perfect the way you are, that's not at all true because no one is perfect the way they are. I'm not perfect at all. If I wasn't, if, if I was perfect, I wouldn't need Jesus. And Jesus says that himself. He says that in Matthew 5. Yeah, Matthew 5, verse 48. You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Meaning the only way to get to heaven is if you are perfect. Never sinned, never lied, never stolen, never looked lustfully after, some, after someone. Perfect. And guess what? No one on earth is capable of that except for Jesus Christ who lived and died for our sins. He said, I can pay that, and he did. And that is why we have to put our faith in him, put our trust in him, that he paid our way to get to heaven. But Jesus has a simple request for us. He says, turn from your sin. This is in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. That means become like Jesus, that you abstain from sexual immorality. And included in that is homosexuality, bi bisexual. All of, all of these issues are in that. So I see this video as a very dangerous video. It's very dangerous. Luckily, BuzzFeed right now, they are not killing it in views. <laughs> That's the only good thing I can see from this is that this video only has 43,000 views. That's really not a lot for BuzzFeed who has 20 million subscribers and they only have 43,000 views. That's it for this YouTube video. If you enjoyed this YouTube video, please give it a like and a thumbs up. Please let me know down in the comments what is up. Please drop a comment. At Drop a like. Join me for the, the live stream every Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, link in bio. And I'll see you all in tomorrow's video. Bye.